Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zed from Zed Outdoors. I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I am joined with a good friend of mine, Mark, who is a member of the team here at Wilderness Pioneers. Mark, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Zed. Excellent. Looking look a little dapper with his hat. I feel like I feel like I place that without my hat. <laughs> Let's get a hat. So, Mark is probably going to be the first uh, time you've seen him uh, on video on my channel here at Zed Outdoors. Now, if you've been watching a previous series that I've been doing on natural cordage making, you would have seen the head instructor, Mance. So Mark is part of the team here in Oxford at Wilderness Pioneers. And what Mark is kindly doing is taking out some time to show me and allowing me to record this process to share with you guys on making natural cordage from willow. Yep. Okay, so I've seen this done on video. I've never seen it being done in person. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this just as much as you are. So in this um, video, we're gonna talk through the various steps involved. So hopefully I can go away in my bushcraft base camp and replicate this myself and hopefully help some of you guys at home. So with your kind permission, Mark, what we'll do, we'll begin. So we found a piece of willow that we literally stand behind. I wanna get behind the camera and Mark is gonna show me and yourselves how to make natural cordage using willow. So Mark, we're at this willow tree right now. So we're going to talk about obviously the condition this particular willow tree is in, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. So this particular tree has had some storm damage, as we can see. Um, this branch, this bough has, has fallen down. So we're going to harvest um, an odd branch of this further down. Uh, because it's still attached, it means that with this, uh, this horizontal bow is going to get some sun shoots growing off of it so in a couple of years we'll get some nice vertical uh, small shoots coming through so so just to kind of define exactly what you mean there so essentially it's going to go out of this branch upwards basically. yes yeah willow is really good for uh, for being able to uh, to grow when it's damaged right. so one of the things that you can do with work with willow is to cut off um, some side shoots and just stick it into uh, damp ground and it will often take um, with no further um, treatment at all. Because that's how they wait, make uh, willow coppice for basket. Absolutely, yeah. Them, yeah. Shoots and, right. yeah, absolutely. So in a, in a couple of years we should have, with the fingers crossed, we should have a line of small uh, shoots here. The sun shoots, they're just called sun shoots because, uh, because they head to the sun as quickly as they can. And, uh, and therefore grow fairly vertically. Um, and uh, we'll be able to make some, uh, some baskets with that in a few years. Perfect. So the point here being guys, and obviously we've mentioned this before in the natural cordage making videos, is you obviously don't go around hacking out trees to kind of remove any kind of like materials or whatever, especially living. Mm. Um, it's obviously got to be harvested properly. So obviously this has been damaged and we're only going to be taking a small limb. And obviously with willow, the, um, I guess the key factor is the resilience of it. Mm -hmm. You know, so even by taking a small piece off, um, it will still kind of grow back in abundance. So let's head, head on over to that section over there and we'll take that off. So Mark, this is obviously still part of that fallen branch. So um, we're obviously going to be picking a small piece now. What piece are we going to be going for? So we've got a, a variety to choose from here. I think what we'll do to... Um, We've got a nice suitable piece here that's that's a meter or so long. I think we'll cut it here, and then we'll uh, we'll cut it a bit further up. So, in terms of the natural cordage making using willow, are you looking for things like branches coming out and, and things like that, and knots so, and whatnot? Yeah, it makes it easier if you can have a straight section rather than branches. Okay. Uh, side branches coming out. This one is fairly clean from this joint here. Um, there's a bit of a knot there, but and then up for about a meter or so, and there's a small branch that comes out the underneath that your camera might be able to pick up. Perfect, so we're gonna saw this off now. So we saw this off. Oh. And then I'll, uh, I'm going to have to crash through this bit a little bit. Try not to do too much damage. So could you be working with wider diameter pieces as well? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you just create more, more willow, more work to do to take it apart. <laughs> right. 
So the, the side chute is coming off it at this point, mm -hmm. so I'm going to cut just here, just this side of it, so that the piece that we've got is, is fairly smooth. Perfect. So Mark, here we have the piece then. Yep, so this is the piece. We'll, uh, we'll take that back to base camp and, uh, and prep that. Perfect. So with Mark, we're back at base camp. So what's the next step now, now that we've retrieved that piece of willow to work with? So we've harvested this piece of wood. Um, we can see that uh, it's going to the, the uh, bark is going to peel quite nicely by the look of it. But before we do that, we need to take the outer bark off. Bark is made out of two layers, um, and we need to, to remove this outer protective layer so that it, it uh, reveals the, the nice um, succulent bit that we want for, to make our cordage from. Perfect. So, what process are we going to use then to remove this? So, we bark? just take um, uh, the back of a knife and we can just scrape it really. So we're trying to remove as much of this green as we can. And we just go around the whole thing, scraping what we can. Get that lot right off. So with Willow, there's obviously a peak time, isn't it, of the year? Well, ideally be harvesting it for uh, cordage. So yes, the uh, the time to, to take this is uh, when the sap is is flowing well, so that the uh, the bark, the inner bark, separates from the the core wood. So now you're just doing enough to remove basically the green, essentially. Yeah, yeah. So the green is just the protective layer of the bark doesn't really have any uh, huge amounts of properties that we want to have for the um, for the cordage making. Gets in the way, gets a bit um, crumbly and so on. Um, so we're just trying to get it so that we can, uh, we've got this access to this nice stuff below. So Mark, obviously you removed it for most of it. Uh, you're yeah. approaching the end there, uh, and it's something actually we were just talking off camera, and I thought it's important to show on camera is you're approaching a knot, and how you kind of tackle that. So these these blemishes um, and knots and so on, they can be a real pain because the fibres go all over the place. Um, so you can either uh, persevere and just try and and take the thing off, or you can uh, you can kind of take it off. Um, and um, it means that you end up with a bit of a hole in the in the fibres, mm -hmm. but you know it's it's easier to do that. I think. Okay. Especially this close to the end of the end of the piece, we're only going to lose two or three inches. Right. Perfect. So, um, so same as before. Take the uh, the green off as much as you can. And then um, just take a load of this dead knotty stuff off. Because we're quite, quite close to the end, I don't need to worry about making it neat and tidy the other direction. I'm just going to pull that through. If this were further down, then I would I would make it a nice neat cut so it didn't tear when I took it off gotcha. all the way round. But I'm not going to worry about that. And then we just carry on round, really. So Mark, so you've obviously taken all that off now with the knife. Now, what's the next step in the process? So the next step is to remove the outer bark, or the inner bark rather. Um, and uh, there are several ways that you can do this. Sometimes you can just get your fingers underneath and just gently prise it up and it will lift. Sometimes you need a little tool to help you do that. 
Um, and the tool is this is the tool. It's a little wedge, um, just cut out of any old stick. It's called a spud, um, and uh, it's just used in just to lift it up slightly. We'll slide down here, and um, and then that just lifts up. If I turn that, you can see. And then just by using that that lever, that wedge, yeah. it just helps lift it right out. So if you were to do this, for example, coming back to what we discussed earlier, at a different time of year, yeah. um, there wouldn't be as much sap and it would be a... Indeed, yeah. What difference. happens is that the, the inner bark sticks to the, um, to the, to the wood, the central wood, uh, and it's always, it can be a real pig to, to get it to, um, to lift like this. This is quite nice and soft, so... Um, it's working fairly well. But I'm just edging my way around. This is where we get the issue with the knots that I was talking about earlier. So um, by cutting this bit off it means that you have to be a little bit careful but it doesn't get all caught up. What can happen is that it, it ends up getting all tied up around here gotcha. and, um, and you end up tearing it. So by cutting it you lose some, but it means that it's not going to tear and you're not going to ruin the rest of it. So we'll just... I wonder if I can do this with my hands. This is really nice and wet, so this is coming off quite well. So there's a little bit of a sticky point there, so I'm going to use the spud for that. This is where we have these knots that are in a bit of a pain. I think we're close. There we go. God, that's a beautiful piece. That's come off really well, isn't it? So Mark, we've got a beautiful piece over here, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, this has come off really well. So the next stage is to, we need to boil this up in some uh, water and, and, a, and an ash solution. Um, and to do that, the easiest way really is to, is to tear it into strips um, so that we can, um, we can get it in the pot easier. Um, and we've got to tear it into strips anyway to make it into the cordage. So we might as well do it now. Um, so this should tear fairly easily lengthways. So we just take it down with the grain, let it do its own thing. In terms of the, the width of it, what are you looking at? Is it, are well, you going to break this down even further? We'll, um, yeah, when we, when we actually do the, the cordage part, then um, we will. Um, but at the moment, just in terms of getting it into, a, into the pot and so that we can, you can um, coil it easily to, to get it in the pot and make sure that it, it all stays boiling away nicely. Uh, we'll just put it into manageable chunks really. So while you're doing that we can just touch on the topic of um, the boiling. So by boiling what are we actually doing here? Uh, boiling it with the ash solution. So the, um, it puts a, a lye solution in um, which helps preserve the, uh, the, the bark, um, changes the composition Break. of it. Breaks down the protein. There you go. Breaks down the protein. And it, uh, it means that it makes a much stronger bark um, cordage.
So all broken up into strips and now so we've torn can... it into strips um, and just to make it easier to put it into the into the boiling we're just going to sort of wrap it up a little bit um, so that the the ends don't all fly out when you open the lid of the pot really more than anything else just makes it manageable So Mark, we've put the ash in. Yep, uh, so we've got some ash and, and coals in there, giving it a bit of a, a mix up. Um, Is there a particular amount of ash that you've got to be kind of um, putting in or how? Kind of as much as you can. Right. Um, yeah, this, the, more, the more that's in there, the better. Um, obviously there's a limit at which you, because um, you can't fit the- Saturation, yeah. Yeah, um, if, you, if you can't fit the bark in, then it, you've gone too far. <laughs> Um, so you're going to let this boil now? Or so how? no, we're going to put the bark in Okay. and then we're going to bring it to the boil and boil it for a bit. So we'll put those in there. We may well add some more coals and some more ash in a, in a, in a bit. Um, but I wanted to be able to get this in first. And give it a bit of a stir. So at what point do we add the chilli and the fried uh, onions? Uh, well we need to let this settle first right. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then the rest of it will go in in a bit. <laughs> this is normally Mance's cooking. So Mark, I noticed you put uh, a stone uh, on top, it's just to weigh it down. So yeah, we had on. some of the, the twists of the bark were sticking out of the, the water. So. You can either add more water, but then that means that it dilutes the lye solution and you need to add more of the ash. The other option is to push it down below the water level. So uh, we've just grabbed a, a stone just to weight it down a little bit. We'll put the lid on now and then that will uh, gently cook away for an hour or so. Um, uh, so we're going to basically leave this now once you cover it yeah, for about an yeah, hour? Yeah, we'll, we'll get it to boil and we'll, we'll uh, boil it for an hour or two and see, see how it looks. So Mark, this was obviously left on the fire for a while. Yep. Uh, yep. To cook, we obviously had the stone on top to weigh it down. Yeah. So we boiled it up for uh, for a while. We've uh, we've taken it off and we've let it cool down. Uh, so let's have a look, see what we got. Did you remember to add the salt and pepper? Ah, that's what's missing. <laughs> it is. Ah. It's going to taste bland. We're going to have to start again. <laughs> <laughs> so. So this rock's still warm actually, takes a nice colour. So this is our, our bark. So there's bits in here, um, it feels a bit gritty. So I think what we'll do is we'll take it all out of here, put some clean water through and then give it a rinse. Cool. And then that will um, get rid of these the lumpy bits because that won't be very good in the cordage and Perfect. if it bits of grains of, of sand and dirt and stuff that will potentially that could uh, that could weaken the cordage gotcha um, so we'll uh, we'll give that a rinse um, and then uh, and split this up into thinner pieces that are suitable for uh, for for um, transferring into cordage right so we're going to empty this out then so yep yeah, we'll take all this lot out and just take the bark rather than all the other bits and bobs. Put that on there. Stay. Okay, 
so that's that. Right, let's get rid of this. So Mark, all cleaned out? Yep, so we've got some clean water in here now. So we'll just put this lot in there, give it a bit of a, give it a bit of a shake, get all the dirt off. go right so this is our nice cordage that we've got now we could use uh, if we were making fairly thick rough and ready kind of um, uh, cordage we could use this just as is mm -hmm. um, but uh, normally you would want to have it a little bit thinner mm -hmm. so if we um, you can do this in in two ways um, you could use a knife and have a, a guide uh, and do it quite precisely um, and that works very well if you're looking for really nice neat cordage mm -hmm. um, it works very well you can also just kind of tear it down um, and be a bit careful as you tear it um, and just kind of keep a, an idea of the kind of size that you're after So just allowing the the, um, the fibres to separate really. There we go. So that's that's one bit that will be reasonable sort of thickness to um, to make a bit of cordage out of. So we'll hang that up just to, to dry a little bit. The better, it's better if you can allow it to dry the, the first time because um, the shrinkage, the most of the shrinkage happens on that first drying. Right. So if you do it, if you allow it to dry first, you end up with more even cordage because obviously you could have one side of the cordage drying more than, than the other side, which then means that you're going to have a, an uneven wrap once it all dries out. Um, so we'll hang this up to dry and then we'll be, uh, we'll be good to go. And we'll um, split the other bits up. we we'll just hang them all up in one go. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So we get the next piece out. Bit of a bird's nest. So Mark, all ready to dry then? Yep, yep. So we've taken these out, I've split these down into various sizes. Um, so we'll just hang them over a branch and, and let them dry. And so once this is dry, we'll have a Rastafari and hair wig. Uh, all ready for, <laughs> all ready for yeah, fancy yeah. dress. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There we go. So with this one, in terms of drying then, how long would you typically leave this for? Well, I mean, it's, it's one of those how long is a piece of string. Um, in terms of, yeah, obviously it depends on the weather conditions and what have you. Um, we're in a nice summer's day, um, so it will take, uh, in the sunshine, it will take a couple of hours. Um, in the shade, maybe um, uh, four or five or whatever. It's until they're, um, until they're good and dry, really. Because when you get them to come to use them, you wet them again anyway, mm -hmm. so they can be um, they can be uh, perfectly dry without a problem, so that they will store well without starting to rot. Perfect. So what we'll do then? We'll come back in a few hours, and obviously for you guys watching, it'll just be a few seconds, and we'll wait until some of these are dry and then we can start weaving. So by the pyro magic <laughs> and video editing, it's been a while. So we've now picked up some of the pieces that have been dried. Yep. Um, and so now time for weaving. Yep. So these are some of the dry bits. We'll just get them damp again because it's easier to, to weave when they're damp. So we just scrunch that in. So as a reminder to those watching, the, it's the initial time it's important to dry. Basically, yeah, absolutely. Yep. 
So yeah. just while you're doing that then, so let's say uh, you prepared a load of these and you were going to um, weave at a later date. Mm -hmm. um, so basically the straw drying part, you would just leave it at that basically, wouldn't yep. you? Yeah, absolutely. Until yep. you're ready to, uh, to yep. start weaving. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So we'll leave those bits there. So this is a uh, Flemish twist, the same way that um, you would make uh, nettle cordage or, uh, or bramble cordage or whatever. Um, and you just twist, get them somewhere in the middle um, of your, your piece and then just twist. Um, with wet hands it's not quite so easy. But just keep on twisting until um, the piece wants to twist round on itself and then keep twisting, allow it to allow it to twist round itself um, and then you end up with a kink in one place like so and then you just end up drying my hands a little So what is it you're doing here? You're twisting. So I'm just twisting both strands the same direction. Mm -hmm. So for me, these are going, uh, it's clockwise for me. Um, and then take the next strand, twist the same di direction. And I'm just locking it in place with my fingers. Just allowing them to, to twist and then what happens it gets to the point where they want to wrap round each other mm -hmm. and between my thumb my thumb and my uh, first finger and then I just let that happen so as they as they want to twist I just let them work so you're twisting each one yep and then you're releasing the tension from your thumb yeah, and allowing to the, that to twist, each other. To, to twist around each other. So we end up with, with an, uh, hopefully a nice even twist around each other. So each each strand is twisted around itself, and then the two uh, wrap around each other. The object is to try and keep the tension equal on both sides, and the thickness roughly equal as well. Otherwise, you end up with the thin strand wrapping around the fat strand and uh, you lose the strength in the um, in the string. So the when you twisted one, you've kept the tension there with your fingers. Yeah. And then you now turn in the other. Yeah, and then just catching up. And then just um, encouraging that to twist. And then you get to the point where it wants to stop naturally. So it's then time to, to twist in each individual one again. So how much do you know you need to twist by before it's enough to... So this, this one is just at the point of wanting to twist on itself again, like we did right at the beginning. So if I were to carry on that twist, I can feel it wanting to twist around itself like that. So just before you get to that point, that's when you stop and go on to the other one. And then holding these two, you then just encourage that. Rather than twisting round itself, you're you're encouraging it to twist around the other piece. So, Mark, you've approached the end of one of the lengths. Yeah. So we're getting towards the end of this this length. Um, it's a good idea to have um, have a staggered uh, ends so that uh, the joins, which are inherently the weak part of the cordage, are not both at the same place. Um, if you stagger them, then you um, you reduce the that weakness. So um, what we're going to do is uh, I'll just take it a little bit further. Um, with this one, you know, obviously I'll, I'll be learning from you guys as well, this cordage making. So a couple of little things that I found maybe you want to just kind of touch on is um, when you're tightening 
each piece mm -hmm. um, is to really uh, get it to a good point of tension. I realized when I was making it, um, and this is maybe applicable to people who try it who are watching, um, what I mean by that is in order to get a tight wave like Mark is doing here, when you're twisting each single piece, it's really important to get it absolutely tight, isn't it? Yeah. As much as possible. Yeah. Get a good twist on it, almost to the point where, if I use this as the demonstration, so keep on twisting, almost to the point where it wants to fold round on itself, which is the, the beginning part of the, um, of the Flemish twist. Get it to that point, and then that's where you hold it and go on to the next one. And then when you get to that, you can, and then you allow the two to wrap around each other. That's when you get a nice tight weave um, when they join together. The, the, the fewer turns you do on each individual, the more, the longer each rotation is going to be. So, and the, the less tight um, the, the, the twist is going to be. It's going to affect, obviously, the strength, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. To a degree, absolutely. So. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. also to maybe, rather than twi twisting, when you're twisting both pieces, you select a section to twist. Um, you were advising me, your team was advising me to do it in small lengths in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. So obviously if you're, if you're twisting this kind of length, then you're going to have to twist it that much more to get to the point where, you're, where the thing wants to turn. If you're going to twist this bit, then that's at the same point there. So um, I was only doing a third or a quarter of the amount of turns there to get to that point. The difficulty is, first of all, it's difficult for the camera to see. And, um, and, and secondly, sometimes it depends how big your hand is, you might not be able to get that close to your, to your bits of work. You might prefer to stretch out slightly with your hands. But you work that out as you do it yourself. Interesting. So with this one now, we need to weave in another So we're now ready to, uh, to put in another piece. So I've got a, another piece here. So we've damped this down as well. Um, we've done that obviously just by dipping it in water. Right? Yeah, yeah, just for a couple of seconds, just to soften it. We're not trying to saturate it, we're just trying to soften it a little. Um, and uh, so we place it along the, the two, um, so that they're alongside each other. And then we just twist these two together. So you do leave a bit of overhang? Leave a bit of overhang. You cut that off afterwards. It's not a problem. So hold those two together. And then you just weave the two in. Oh, let me do that again. There we go. that and then just allow those to and once it's gone through a couple of times then it's back into the into the string and you're away and then you just carry on as normal and then you just carry on as normal I remember when I was trying this, it definitely gives your fingers a workout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You end up with cramp in your fingers. Take breaks regularly until you're used to it, I think, is the way to go. And then you'll find that there are bits that's sticking out and, um, and what have you, but that's absolutely fine. Um, you just go along with a knife and just chop those bits off as you need to. Um, what you can do if you're feeling really brave is just run it through the flame of mm -hmm. a fire just to get rid of the the fine hairs as well and um not, not on your body but on the actual yeah mind you yeah. do it on your body too you, i guess well, if that's, that's just a, yeah that would yeah. be a really manly video wouldn't it <laughs> be waxing by jumping over i'll let you do that one right <laughs> you expect to see it at my base camp so. <laughs> so we just carry on and then you just make as much as you want you can make meters and meters of the thing Let it rotate round itself. So 
So as the uh, instructor Mance mentioned in obviously a previous tutorial, uh, you can obviously strengthen uh, the same cordage by wrapping it around twice, isn't it? So, yeah, so... Um, so this is two-ply. So this is the, the standard two-ply. Um, what you can do is um, twist it, keep twisting, and it will want to twist round itself at that point. So you just kind of... So you're basically just repeating the same thing? Uh, it's exactly the same process, and you're wrapping one two-strand piece around another two-strand piece. Um, to make a thicker, a four ply effectively, um, and of course you can carry on and carry on, and you can end up with something a ship's anchor would hang off of. Um, if you really, uh, you, you don't have any ships uh, nearby. Uh, I see no ships. <laughs> test, test, so we can test that one. So Fortunately, that's, that's, that's our next project. Is so it, it's um, yeah, and that's that's. Um, one of the ways to um, to strengthen your cordage, if you're making a, a shelter as opposed to um, um, I don't know uh, a fishing line or something or other something delicate, then you can use uh, some thicker cordage. You could start off with thicker pieces, um, or you can just double twist it. So there you go, guys. That is a wrap for this video. Mark, thank you so much. Pleasure. Fantastic, I love seeing that entire process. So here's the thing, uh, this kind of wraps up the short series that I've done with the team over at Wilderness Pioneers about natural cordage making. So hopefully you gain some value from this tutorial. Do let us know how you get on, go out there, give it a try. Like we stressed earlier on in the video, be responsible how you resource uh, the materials, but obviously that shouldn't really stop you from going out there and attempting this when as, a, and as appropriate that you've gained the materials in the right manner. So like I said, this tutorial really I wanted it designed in a way where obviously I'm learning in person but then obviously you guys can obviously follow the process at home now obviously other people that are doing it out there will have their own little nuances and how they do it but this is how the team here do it so make sure you give it a try if you've never done it before and let us know how you get on now below I'll put a link to the previous videos that we've done with the team at Wilderness Pioneers about the other aspects of natural cordage making please do go check those out also I'm going to be putting a link to Wilderness Pioneers Instagram profile so make sure um, sorry the in, uh, YouTube channel so obviously they put out some fantastic videos and they're putting out quite a few videos on an ongoing basis they do some really good quality tutorials and other stuff that they got going on they're actually going to be building another primitive base camp so this is the first one that they built they've got another site that they're going to start documenting another build they're also mm -hmm. going to put a link to their Facebook page mm -hmm. okay so obviously these guys are quite active over there and put a link to their website where you can find out more information about the courses and other things that they have going on um, any last words from you no, it's been a great weekend, isn't it? It's been a beautiful weekend. Yeah. Beautiful day today, sun shining. Yeah. I need to get myself one of these swanky hats. Yeah. That's it, man. Yeah. It's, all, it's all happening here, mate, I tell you. Uh, <laughs> but seriously, thank you once again, Mark. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you really so much. Pleasure. These guys have been great hosts for me and have been very gracious taking the time out to allow me to kind of document this process for you guys to share uh, and see and hopefully try out yourself too. So, like I said, please do go check out the other Natural Cordage videos linked to below. Go and check out the social media links for these guys at Wilderness Pioneers. I'll put a link to those below as well. And also let me know your thoughts down below in the description box. And obviously there's a lot of other videos coming soon as well. I'm looking forward to trying this myself. So I've gained a lot more confidence and a lot more of a process spending time with these guys that I can now go away. And I think the key thing here is practice, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, to yeah. sit down repetitive and over and over and over and yeah. over again. Yeah, uh, yeah. Awesome. absolutely. It's the, it's the sort of the, um, the mo muscle memory, um, figuring out the, the amount of twist that you need to put in to, mm. the, to get the right um, rotation um, and tightness on it. Um, and it's all about practice. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Stretching out those fingers, man. That's yeah. what it's about. I need to do some yeah. finger stretching exercises. Yeah. <laughs> when I get home, I don't look like an LA gangster, you know, like <laughs> practicing some finger stretching <laughs> techniques in front of the mirror. But hey, it's all good, man. So, like I said, I do appreciate. Uh, what these guys here have done allowing me to document this process please go check out those links and as always for mark and myself i hope whatever you're doing you have a blessed day a blessed week ahead this is ed from zell outdoors peace out